from the, your wishes that came in, what, 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 what was something within that program mm. that really stood out for you? Um, in the program itself, let me see. I mean, I've listened to the program, I would say, about oh, at least over 30 times now, and now I'm listening to it randomly um, on, my, on my iPod, and, and as is the rest of the group. But for me, something that really stood out um, from, from those teachings, and I'm, I'm going to try to think of something that hasn't been brought up in the secret or that I haven't, you know, that, I, that I've seen that was unique. There's a couple of factors okay. that... There's a couple of factors that really intrigued me and that really raised my vibration and really raised um, the, my ability to manifest at a higher speed. And I think the first one was um, deadlines. You know, when I was, I was a huge goal setter, I mean, a big follower. I started following Tony Robbins when I was 15 years old and a lot of the motivational speakers talking about, you know, setting goals, having deadlines for them, you know, making sure that you can measure those things. And... One of the biggest, the biggest keys to actually manifesting what it is that you truly want is trusting that everything comes at the perfect time and forgetting about those timelines that we set on a regular basis when, when we want something. So we want a car, we want to you know, be able to manifest the love of our life and we say, you know, I want that before the end of the year. <laughs> and, and creating that deadline, for me, I realized it automatically created this, this pressure. This pressure of needing to have to get it done. And as soon as that came about, I realized that my focus um, uh, was directed to my head. And most of the energy was coming from my head rather than just allowing it to be attracted into my vibration. Mm. So for me, that was a huge aha. Uh -huh, and I know that we all have some, so I won't, I won't use them all. But for me, that was, that was a huge one. Not putting any timeline on, on the things that I wanted to manifest. Um, so obviously we're always keeping track, so now, yeah, when we want something, when we want to manifest a home, we want to manifest a vehicle, we want to manifest an awesome journey with dolphins, which we have, I mean, we can do that in a couple of hours now, we're, you know, so we, we do keep track afterwards, in hindsight we can look back, but when we do set the initial intent, we never ever have a deadline to it, and that's something extremely important that I don't think was brought up, um, in the secret. Right. Um, and... That's a, that's a huge one that was introduced to us by some of the elites, um, and I, I mean, I'm definitely grateful to have, to have those little key elements that definitely, like, like we've been taught, if you're trying to, you know, create a delicious chocolate cake, and what's happening is that you're getting the recipe, you know, you want to get the recipe from the people that are really doing it, and if you're emitting one of the, one of the key ingredients, um, I mean, it becomes, it becomes definitely a huge challenge in terms of manifesting what it is that you want. When you have all the ingredients, then you see, I mean, you really see these things coming about in such record speed, and it just feels so good and feels so right. Mm. Yeah, you know, that's a, if anybody, you know, well, this call, it, people listen to this call, uh, walk away with anything, that was an awesome um, uh, point to make because... We don't realize that when we do that kind of thing that we're actually limiting an unlimited universe yes. by putting those, you know, those particular uh, criteria of receiving something. If we get out of our own way and let the universe do it, mm. the universe that does things like keep the planets in alignment, you know, it certainly knows how to do what this, you know, thing that I think is such a big deal uh, in a way that can be like... Um, it's like a no-brainer, <laughs> you know, to the universe. And if I just, if I just enjoy myself along the way, it's loving that energy. Yes. It wants to help, you know, wants it to be there, you know. Mm. To, to, this, it's that was a great point to make. We don't want to limit anything. So, um, mm. you know, I, I remember actually uh, that you, when you said that it brought up one of the Abraham Hicks that I was uh, listening to, and, and someone was talking about that very same thing about deadlines, and they said to call them lifelines, mm, you know, that. just that one little switch of a word makes a big, huge difference. Completely, completely.
And I think Michael has something to share about on the same concept of your wishes are command. Oh uh, yes. Um, okay. Another key element that um, that I think is is a big one is you know people have a desire that they want to create. So they imagine it, they feel it, and the, I, the most important thing is when you're thinking about it, you know, because you because you, you think you want a certain thing. Sometimes there's a deeper level of why you want a certain thing. You know, maybe maybe you want a, a nice expensive watch. You know, you think you want a nice expensive watch, but really deep down inside, you're searching for a feeling. You want to experience a feeling of of looking stylish, of, of having something of value on you, of looking impressive. You know, so so there's things that we think we want, but there's usually a deeper level to why we want those things, and also. When, when we're thinking about the things we want, how, you know, if, if, you're, if you're thinking about a, des a, a desire, do you get excited? If you're not getting excited thinking about what you want, and, you, and you're, you know, you're feeling the lack of it, you're just pushing it away. So it's, mm -hmm. it's so important to think about what you want and being excited about it and having believability. So there's a few there's a few factors involved of being excited, believability and um, yeah. yeah. It's what it's what they call in your wish your command the sweet spot. Being in the sweet spot. And that's and that's a big uh -huh. one. Um, uh, being in the sweet spot is probably one of the most important things and you can judge that based on your feelings. So many people say, you know, if this law of attraction thing really works, let me you know, let me give it a try. I want to manifest one million dollars. And when they think about that $1 million, even though their head wants it, deep down inside it brings about a negative feeling. Right. Right. And when that does happen, at that point you have to realize that that thing is not in your sweet spot. And you have to immediately stop focusing on it because the focusing on it is actually repelling it. So you can build the momentum right. by starting with something smaller. So you can start manifesting you know, $10, $10, an unexpected check of $10 in the mail or however it wants to manifest itself. Start with something that, number one, you can believe you can achieve, and number two, that feels good when you think about it. If you have those two key elements, you, that desire is what we call, or what your wish your command calls, um, being in your sweet spot.